Hello, everyone. Welcome to Elevating Your Life. So happy to have you with us today. I have a great guest today to share with you. I have with us Carrie Severson, and she is the author of Unapologetically Enough and the upcoming book, Enoughness Method. She is an entrepreneur and recovery burnout. She shares very openly about what it means to live as enough each day and passes on tips for others to do the same. She can, uh, she will share her, her website information and stuff about the book uh, with all of us today. But first off, welcome, Carrie, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here. Happy to have you with us. Well, Good. share, Carrie, uh, some of your background and, and then kind of what triggered you to write uh, your first book, Unapologetically right. Enough. Unapologetically Enough. So um, I've always been in the storytelling space. I uh, I wanted to become a storyteller from a young, young age, and I got into storytelling through journalism first um it writing for newspapers was not really my thing I was much more uh interested in personal storytelling and sharing the depths of who I was with somebody and kind of like navigating them on this beautiful journey that only I could weave together and I was definitely not a journalist I was much more an essayist uh uh yeah a first person writer right so but the thing that really drew me or kind of uh, drove me was my background. Growing up as a, a young girl in the small town Wisconsin, I experienced bullying pretty harshly. Uh, and I always wanted to change the way girls treated girls and women treated women. And I thought the best way to actually do that would be to get into the storytelling space and kind of change where the spotlight landed so that we had a, a bigger breadth of role models to look up to and change uh, how the media really portrayed women and girls. So I actually created a nonprofit in 2011. It was a bullying solutions organization for young girls. And it was right as this bubble of girl on girl bullying sort of erupted. Michelle Obama had just launched stopbullying.gov and the First Lady Phoenix launched Stop Bullying AZ. And my little one person shop just literally catapulted into this national spotlight within a matter of weeks, literally weeks. And I took off running at a pace that was unsustainable, but I did it for years on end, which led to burnout. And when I originally burned out in 2013, the only person that was really talking about it was Ariana Huffington. So I started sharing what I was going through for, because I'm a storyteller and I grew up in that space of magazine and newspapers, I decided I can write about my personal experience. So I started writing about what it felt like to feel like I was suffocating and overwhelmed and what tools and techniques were working for me and I would share them publicly and through really large media channels and get invited to share on stage um it was really great actually this was like 2013 2014 and the response from that was international people from around the world were like this is what I'm experiencing thank you so much for sharing I totally relate to this so I spent years writing a book based on the response from my own personal journey. Mm -hmm. Unapologetically Enough was born. Uh, it took me eight years to write, but I put it out into the world in 2022. And it's been a wild, beautiful, amazing ride ever since. Uh, was your burnout, was that based on the work you were doing or was it based on how you were being treated? Definitely the work. And I would say that it was not having, now what, knowing what I know about burnout, not having boundaries in place, not loving myself enough to put myself first in those places um, on a daily basis, uh, not saying no enough and consistently chasing 
things that I couldn't control. So it was definitely a hundred percent work. The, you know what, maybe 75% the work, 25% how I I was treating myself. (laughs) And so there was this cyclical rat race that I couldn't get out of. Yeah. So would you say burnout can be from different areas? It can be from no, work. it can be from how we're treated or frustration in not getting where we want to go. And so with it being spread like that, is it kind of the same thing to remedy that and to help with that? Well, um, so professional burnout is typically what uh, how burnout is thought about. Since COVID, though, I would say that the definition or the concept of how we get to burnout has really expanded. But prior to that, it was typically a professional, um, it's not considered a disease, it's not a condition, I guess. It is, uh, burnout is being, feeling emotionally, physically, mentally overwhelmed due to chronic, prolonged exposure to chronic stress. Uh, And it was traditionally, a professional condition. Mm -hmm. Since COVID though, I don't think there's a single person on the planet that hadn't, that wasn't impacted from feeling overwhelmed during that time, you know, with young parents having to juggle online school with their kids and, you know, everything in in the home. Um, I do a lot of speaking about burnout now and the majority of the conferences I'm asked to go to or the corporations I'm asked to go into are professional. Um, my experience has been professional, but I know a ton of stay-at-home moms who um, have been out of the workplace for three or four years that share the same kind of symptoms and the same sort of thought process as I had when I was in the depths of professional burnout. What would a few symptoms be of burnout? If, because I'm thinking someone may not even be aware that they have burnout, you know, they're just maybe frustrated. Right. What would some of those symptoms be? And what would maybe some of the steps be that they could take for that? Yeah. Um, so the a lot of times it's the like chronic fatigue, not chronic fatigue, syndrome but waking up day after day after day feeling like even though you slept eight to ten hours you still need four cups of coffee to get going or to even stay afloat through the day uh weight gain is a a big one particularly in your belly um the just the apathy the like lackluster it's sort of life is dim right now you just don't care that's a really big one which and that last one the apathy has really led to this quiet quitting phenomenon that's happening around the country where folks are going uh, in when their job description states, leaving when their job description states and doing simply what their job description states, no longer in the space of going up and beyond or looking for the promotion or taking on additional responsibilities. so those three are the biggest ones, the, you know, bone tiredness, weight gain, particularly in your belly and apathy for your job. And then in terms of uh, regulating that, that's sort of what my new book, The Enoughness Method is all about. Because so many people have asked this, I've actually been given a number of opportunities based on my book, Unapologetically Enough, to come into workplaces and go into conferences and actually help people recalibrate their nervous system because I think burnout is a nervous system issue and um, figure out how to climb out of burnout. So my favorite tip for recovering from burnout is cold shower, cold plunge, splashing cold water on your face. It actually acts as a rebound, uh, moving our body into a parasympathetic nervous system because we're already typically in fight or flight when we're feeling that anxiousness that the cold water sort of acts as a rebound. That's my absolute favorite thing. I I do that several times a day still to this day. (laughs) It's 
kind of that body shock, just kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, yeah, I laugh, I scream. Yep, yeah. and then typically after like, I'd say 30 seconds, there's this, there's this release that happens. And once that happens, I tend to laugh. But at first it's the shock, it's, you know, yeah. your breath gets caught in your chest. And then um, after a couple of seconds, oh, it, everything just sort of releases. But um, yeah, it's my favorite absolute tip. Wow. And then you run and you cuddle under a heated blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that, that little bit of that physical action mm -hmm. is going to trigger something in the emotions. Yes, it helps break up the pattern of your... Uh, sympathetic nervous system running your life feeling as if you're being chased by the tiger and that you know the monkey's on your back by shifting into parasympathetic we're breathing we're breathing deeper our heart rate is lowering our digestive system is operating better our blood pressure is lowering we're able to think clearer the brain fog is kind of uh decreased and the you know that um, that fight or flight of making decisions in split seconds that may not be for your best good has moved to the back burner. That's really what the big important piece is. How do you mm -hmm. get out of that state? Yeah. Yeah. What, what would uh, your second best, what would your second best tip be? So breathing techniques are, there's plenty of them out there. I love this one called four, seven, eight, where you're inhaling for four, holding for seven, exhaling for eight, and you're making that whooshing sound to try to engage your vagus nerve. Box breath is a phenomenal breathing technique. It's the inhale for four, hold for four, exhale. Or you're actually exhaling first for four, holding for four, inhaling for four, exhaling for four. And that one is uh, a breathing technique that Navy SEALs use. Yeah. That's a great one. The key I've is done that one. Yeah, that's a great one. It is. And then there's triangle breath, inhale for three, hold for three, exhale for three. Um, the key is to do any breathing technique multiple times and for like several minutes. And again, you're trying to get your parasympathetic nervous system to kick in. You're trying to allow your breath to run through your body, get some fresh oxygen going um allow your nervous system to sort of settle so that you don't feel like you're unsafe and so a, a couple rounds of those deep breathing techniques will definitely help but yeah. the enoughness method is something i created to help me get out of those really tight moments of you know the panic is coming the anxiety is overwhelming i can't take a deep breath and um so I share my go-to tips. I have three little steps, uh, as well as a slew of other ones I've tried. But um, breathing technique and cold shower, absolute go-tos. And you can, I mean, even if you can't get in the shower, I've um, been in places where I'll feel, I'll feel the fight or flight coming and I'm in public and I'll go to the public restroom and I'll just splash water in my face or hold water in my hands and just, you know, put it up to my face like that. Mm -hmm. um, or a cold bottle of water against my neck to, you know, get my vagus nerve. Yeah. Cold water yeah. helps. Wow. Wow. So any, any steps you'd recommend, maybe meditation or just you know, thinking of what you are grateful for it, does any of that play into that and, and help you with that? Um, I, I'm a big meditator. I have been for 20 years, highly intuitive, love visualization, believe in it a hundred percent. Those things were always more self-care tips for, and learning how to love myself again. So absolutely. Um, love ourselves yeah putting boundaries around your worth is definitely uh helping us move out of burnout because we have to prioritize ourselves and so whatever helps you feel good about yourself again and helps you recognize your worthiness and your enoughness 
is plays a part in all of that. I'm a big meditator. I, uh, I don't even need guided anymore. I can just sit back, sort of drop down. Um, I've been practicing. I'm 45. I've been practicing since I was 28. So I love nice. it. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah, that could be huge. Well, how did you come up with that title for your up, uh, upcoming book, The Enoughness Method? So yeah. it sounds theme like I've had enough of where I am and I'm going to make changes. <laughs> so for me, um, the enoughness method really came uh, because unapologetically enough was uh, the term enough was a trigger word for me for quite a while. I had to do a lot of deep healing around this word enough. Um, and the, when I was burnt out in 2014, 2015, the concept of enough was a four letter word. I looked at it as not having enough, not getting enough. I needed more and it was never enough. And the healing process I went through on that word enough was a game changer, accepting myself as enough, being unapologetically enough. Um, and so the enoughness method was really born out of recognizing there were practices I was doing on a regular basis, on a daily basis, sometimes twice or three times a day to help me feel good about myself, feel own that enoughness, regulate my nervous system. And when I would go out to these, con you know, uh, conferences, um, or in, into corporations and ask to speak about unapologetically enough or share burnout prevention, burnout recovery tips. Um, the enoughness method was always something I left them with. I was like, oh, and here's some simple tips and tools you can do anywhere um, to help you find your own enoughness. And so uh, it was a reflection, a great reflection of people who are reading the book and talking about their own enoughness and just sort of evolved from there. And I mean, so much can... Uh change the picture and what we envision if our focus is on what we don't have enough we don't have enough we mm -hmm. don't have what we want compared to what I have accomplished what mm -hmm. I do have that I'm grateful for I mean just taking the thoughts in in those two directions can be huge in in what we bring in stepping forward absolutely being at looking at it as uh from a place of gratitude versus a place of the lack was definitely something I had to do and I think looking at the research uh from burnout in 2023 so many women particularly young women in their 30s uh are leading burnout the millennial generation are really struggling with burnout right now and helping them get back into their hearts back into their bodies recognizing their own enoughness from a place of gratitude um, is something I'm really excited about and I hope this next book does that for them yeah wonderful wonderful because uh you know loving ourselves you know is one of the the key things it really is you know and no matter where we we're at we're all a beautiful being and Mm -hmm. our own special special thing and that's something I've learned was not comparing myself to others just being yeah. proud to be me you know yeah. and that can make a big difference I believe oh yeah the comparison uh what is that called the it's a comparison itis or um there is an actual term for this where you're comparing uh, yourself to somebody else. Oh, the imposter syndrome. That's it. Yeah. The imposter syndrome where we feel like we aren't enough because what we have isn't what somebody else has. Somebody else. Yeah. yeah, that is a head game for sure. That is, that is. And when we can realize, well, we're just what we are and yep. grateful for that. Otherwise we could set a bar that we're never going to get to. Because it's yeah. something else. It's not right. us. Yep. Yeah. That's I mean, even great... moments like that, the comparison or um, being able to pull our thoughts 
back down, right? Because when we get into where we're comparing ourselves to everything else, uh, a lot of times our emotional state gets so, we're going down these rabbit holes and it's really hard to pull ourselves out of that. Um, so recognizing triggers that we have there and how to calm ourselves and get ourselves back into our heart, back into our body. You are safe the way you are. All of those pieces. I mean, I've done so much personal development work and it sounds like you have too, that I recognize those triggers. But for so many people, particularly young women, they haven't really, they haven't done that deep dive work. And if you look at the last four years, the last three years, um, you know, so young 30 year old women have just, um, they really haven't had the opportunity to coming out of college or grad school and then right into the workforce. Yeah. So that that deeper dive and looking at yourself of how to prevent those things, those thoughts from coming up. And as soon as they do come up, how to pull them back down. Um, all that work is so, so valuable. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, you know, be, taking the time to look at ourselves appreciate ourselves, love ourselves. That's, that's so huge. Absolutely. And, and we can get caught up in life and get so busy and with the demands of, of ourselves or from someone else that we, you know, we forget to do that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons the term unapologetic was really important to me. Uh, when I came up with the title of my first book, I was, the concept of being unapologetic was really what I was embracing. I had just turned 40. I was in a, a new relationship. I was tired of being compared to everybody else. And my journey of becoming an author, I had pitched this book to almost 100 agents. And the majority of them, and I'm talking like close to 80 of them, compared unapologetically enough to New York Times bestselling books and authors and big name authors like Bernie Brown, Glenna Doyle, Elizabeth Gilbert, and I was consistently told because I didn't have a big enough platform, the book wasn't saleable. Um, and I got tired of being compared to everybody else. So I was like, you know what? I'm unapologetically enough of me. And that's, uh, I had to own that, you know, and really let that represent who I was yeah. not just for a day but for good yeah. yeah oh you go girl oh well we we have a few minutes left in the show so Carrie what what last message do you want to leave with everyone today well um so for those of you listening who don't know if you're burnt out or question if you're just overly stressed or chronically stressed versus burnt out and what to do about it. My experience has been, if you question burnout, you're already in it. If you, there is a difference between being chronically stressed and burnt out. If you can't get a hold of the stress in your daily life on an ongoing basis, it will eventually lead to burnout. And so whether you feel like you're there already or not, definitely lean into and do some research on uh, regulate, regulating your nervous system and putting more self-love into your life, self-care, self-compassion versus self-harm. Take oh, care of yourself. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And so uh, with the enoughness method, give us a, a few little tidbits on what they can expect when they when they pick that up. Well, uh, so in addition to um, getting my three simple step blend of self-care and nervous system exercises, I the book does share uh, opportunities for you to explore your own personal narratives while developing strategies around self-compassion, as well as my experience of how I got myself out of burnout and how the enoughness method help me find a healthier way of living. Um, yeah, and it'll it'll drop in December. So check I that out. I love it. I love it. That is fantastic. And uh, Carrie, share with everyone your website. 
and and what they can learn going to your website? Sure. Unapologetically enough is the site that I currently have. It's where um, you can get a hold of me, check out the book, my background. Um, and I occasionally do, I do have, you know, consulting packages on there for those of you who do feel like you're burnt out. You can absolutely find me over there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Enough. So you do some consulting as well. Yeah. I help people come out of burnout if they don't feel like they want to read a book or want to do it on their own. Um, they feel like they need a coach or, or consultant of some kind. Mm -hmm. I take on clients. Fantastic. I've been there, done that. And I've, it's been 10 years. I've been in this space for 10 years before burnout was really, you know, a thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, many times it can mean so much just to, to share how we're feeling with someone, just sharing can be a huge benefit, can't it? Yep. Usually after I'm done speaking at an event, uh, I, or even if I'm on TV and I'm, I leave TV at the station, there's always one or two people who will pull me aside and just want to, sh just want to tell me their story, you know, for no other reason other than to just have a witness. And I get it. I feel for you. I've been there. It's, you know, not something you can avoid or ignore. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to work at. And that, that means a lot, would you say, just to know when you know, we're going through a challenge that there's other people that, you know, may have gone through this as well. Just knowing yeah. we're not alone in that can be really a huge benefit, I think. Well, it definitely is one of the reasons I I started writing unapologetically enough for the, you know, the, in the first place, having the response to personal essays I wrote about being a burnout in 2014 the response, I mean, floored me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, totally unexpected. And now, um, now that it's out on the market, the response from it, again, has led to the reason I am releasing the enoughness method. So yeah, yeah with being a vocal witness to somebody else's story is what keeps us connected and propels life forward. Oh, Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you for for everything you're doing for others and thank also you. for your books. I'm, I'm just so happy to share you with everyone. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Love, hugs, and blessings. Everyone out there, love, hugs, and blessings. And I will see you again soon. Thank you.